Yo, happy Monday. Good morning, everyone. We have some work to do this morning, some financial modeling. Uh, it's been very busy. I've been doing a lot of stuff, not with the stream, but just working on this stuff. Um, I just found out about YouTube cards and end screens and all that so i'm trying to update you know 300 videos with stuff so this just takes some time to do that <clears throat> but i think it's it's pretty cool it's worth it uh also i'm thinking about trying to translate or, or do youtube videos that are translated into different languages um i don't know if it's going to be worth it or not based on my stats i there are there's like i'd say 30% of the views are countries with different languages, so could be worth it. So I'm looking into that. Uh, today we're going to do ATM machine, uh, financial model upgrade, or at least start it. This was actually an interesting thing about this one. It's the first model where I built this cash contribution distribution logic here up top. And you can see why it actually required it. See these negative cash flows here in year three? Um, it, it turned out uh, when you have varying cash flows that it can possibly be, be negative further into the future, you can't just take the minimum equity requirement only and use that as the equity requirement for the whole thing. So there's some logic waterfall here happening to make sure the total cash flows here match the actual total cash flow that's happening. Uh, so yeah, this was the first time this model, um, resulted in me building this. And then this has been used now in every single startup financial model I have. So today we'll be getting the, uh, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, CapEx, all those or, or cap table, um, getting everything formatted to the, the new reports that I've been adding to all the models since January. Uh, don't forget, uh, well, Let's uh, get our link out here to Twitter. Get our link out here to Twitter. Sound check. Link out Sounds here. good. Now, what I'm really getting excited about is I'm getting closer to the end of doing these upgrades. And once I get done with the upgrades, I can start streaming regular financial model building during these time slots every day at 10 a.m. Eastern. So, like... You know, I could go research new businesses or new types of businesses that I've never modeled and start modeling them from scratch. So that means you guys will see all of, like, see all this. This has all this logic for revenue and, and like, this monthly p &L and All this stuff is already built in these ones I'm upgrading. So you'll get to see from the very beginning as I go through. Uh, so that'll be uh, better content. But nonetheless, I have to do this, so I figured I might as well stream it. Um, and the reason why I have to is I believe um, all the startup models deserve to have this, uh, these uh, new statements and reports. So, you know, taking all time from making new stuff to improve everything that I currently have. But it's been, a, you know, we're into the sixth month of doing it. And I do believe it's worth it. It is paying off. I believe if you look at the, if I look at my numbers, so I'm gonna keep going till we're done. Uh, I also did a vending machine model that's kind of similar to this, but it has a lot of logic specific to vending machines. ATM machines are they have some similar things, but some different things. But um, this and that are 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 pretty cool in their own right. Uh, so this is part of the the ATM machine I'm upgrading is part of the industry specific financial model bundle. For four ninety nine, or you could just buy it for forty five dollars if you just want this template. I'll uh, probably be done upgrading it by the mid week or end of the week. Shouldn't be too bad. Uh, don't forget to check out all the different financial models I've got. Uh, I've done a ton of work in software as a service, enterprise SaaS, a lot of pricing calculators, revenue forecasting. Really, a lot of good tools here. Um, I've also done a lot of real estate and joint venture cash flow waterfalls. Uh, here, real estate, we got mobile home park, short term rentals, self storage, mixed use, multifamily. Uh, and then 
remember you can always check out the financial models tab at the top you can get everything on the site for 9.99 super super value there um and then real quick last week remember uh it was really busy i had so we did a daily inventory tracker and employee timesheets, and then I put together a small business tools bundle, which I'm calling the mom and shop playbook. So I got that updated. And so this past week, the last seven days, I've been trying to get all these new templates updated on all the vendor sites and the videos made and everything else. So it's just been a lot of work doing all that, but I'm happy to get these, like these one-time trackers are unique. I've never done anything uh, like these two and I believe they're really good for small businesses that will help so I'm happy about that uh, so this week we're gonna like I said we'll update the ATM machine we'll get into it here in a second um, and we'll keep going down the line here so first of all to do this upgrade we've got a 10-year model, not a five-year. Uh, there's going to be no inventory, but ATM machines are a fixed asset, so we're going to have to integrate this to the CapEx, and the CapEx schedule is, it only has 19 slots, and we've got 27 tranches here. So this allows you to put, you know, the date, you buy the, the ATMs, the cost, the count of machines you're buying, the cost per machine, and then all the different revenue factors on here, which is just average fee per transaction, uh, average transactions per day, possibly merchant share, possibly sales tax. Um, now, remember the average fee, you could assume you get an average, per, your fee is a percentage. And what you can do is just estimate the expected volume the ATM machine does and then just uh, do a percentage of that and then put in the dollar amount of that fee there. Which I've actually had some other, uh, some guys that use this model to, because they're doing, uh, I think they were doing Bitcoin ATMs or something, but they used all this logic to build their financial model. And then you can do average transactions per day to figure out how many you know, total fee and that this all scales through time on the same timeline based on your deployment schedule. So in this setup allows you to have a really uh, granular forecast it, or not the word granular. You can, this can be a big operation like hundreds or thousands of ATM or it could be something small where you just got a couple locations you're trying to test out and see the economics. So you can just zero out anything that's not used here. Like if I just cleared this out. You see the numbers with just a couple. You've also got running costs here for fixed costs. Um, uh, some variable costs, repairs, uh, processing fees. I did put some tax, we'll, we'll have other tax logic in here so this will, will not be needed. Uh, and then useful life for depreciation. This matrix is how I do a lot of the dynamic logic for all these, uh, so this can work accurately. Um, well, okay, so to do the import, I need to find a 10-year model that has all this. So let's look back at all the things we've done. I need to find a 10-year model. Mobile Home Park was like 16 years. The equipment rental might actually be good because it's got a lot of CapEx. It's got enough CapEx tranches, but I Yeah, this might be good. Let me look at the equipment rental one. Don't care about this stuff. So this purchase schedule, yeah, it's got a ton. Because this is what I have to, this is the only hard part of the model is this. So I think I can import this. I'll just have 27. We'll just cut it there. 
just looking at some stuff. Uh, yeah, so this would work. I wonder though, do I have another 10 year model that doesn't have all of the so many capex items? I'd rather expand it than use something that's too big. And then, well, I mean, I could use it, but then I just have to hide all the, the unused rows. The mining model was only annual, so that won't work. Manufacturing plant. Oh, no, this was five year, I think. Oh, wait, no, this is 10 year. Oh, capex is smaller. It's only 77, so that's better. Well, this might work. This might work. Let me look at the balance sheet here. We'll see they have inventory. We're not going to use that, but that's okay. Uh, this looks good here. This is nice and clean. Okay, I think we'll use this one. Got a building in there. Uh, well, just thinking. Oh, this only got 75. This is actually less. I'd actually rather use this one. I thought it had more. Okay, we might just use the equipment rental. We won't need... Uh, see, this part's confusing. Okay, let's let's just use the manufacturing one because that's got more... The global controls, how I, I want it to be... We'll just update the building row on the capex. Alrighty, well, so to import a couple things, we want to get all the tab names populated before we start importing, and then we want to do a find and replace, and we're going to make sure to make that work. All the tabs that are being referenced in the imported tabs uh, need to have a space in them. Or else it won't work. So let's update. So these uh, distributions one, validation one, capex. This will be replaced. So we can delete this. We can. Startup cost. Let me look at this one. Is it in BC to 21? Not 20. Okay, so I might as well just re import that as well. Um, okay, so we'll just start from left to right. So global control. This will be renamed. I do want the revenue assumptions out front and then the running costs and then we'll have all this other stuff. So like cap table, cap X, <clears throat> uh, terminal value, Startup cost that schedule. Actually, we can just rename this one. And 
then income statement annual or monthly income statement annual then balance sheet cash flow and what I do here normally is What I normally do is day one of these integrations, I always do all the tab imports and try to fix all the broken stuff. Uh, and then the next day, day two of my upgrade process, I usually then will get all of the formulas linked correctly to all the income statement balance sheet cash flow, which is just usually referencing the monthly detail with their positions and just updating any s formulas that are referencing positions that are different and then making sure everything is all, it all matches with the sanity checks. So day one's more of like how this actually can be done quickly and day two is more about um, actually working on the formulas. This is more formatting today. Okay, I think I've got everything that I need. So let's start the import. So I go, you know, copy global control tab. Just making sure there's nothing. Okay, so this active days per month and this growth of transaction fee, shoot. See, I'm glad I looked at that. So these are specific to this model, so I can't be overriding that. I'll have to work it in. So I'm going to put this over here and make sure the fee matrix is perfect. This is still working. Okay, good. P, t, P and T, P and T, okay. matrix Q what about global control P okay okay all right just make it sure because this stuff I do not want to have to rebuild this looks good wait where's the T reference to column T Did I miss not see that? What did I? Q, Q. Oh, oh, fee matrix. Okay, so that's just referencing this tab here. Got it. Okay, that's fine. All right, so these are safe. Uh, all this other stuff can be written over. Start year. Yeah, all that can be written over. Okay, so I only want to go out to column L. Yep, that'll be fine. Okay. And then I'm in a we'll call this ATM one, two, three. Okay, and then these will have to be worked in, but I'll do that at the end uh, once I have all this other stuff better, better figured out. Because yeah, because well, all these positions need to stay the same right now. Because when you import, so when I copy and paste this stuff over from this model, the positioning, like see at Terminal Valley D7, that's not changing. It'll reference this workbook, so I have to make sure all the positions are the same from the import. All right, this is cap table. 
then next up we have capex Uh, that schedule, we just have a couple formulas that we need to put in here. So this one, move this over here, uh, I'll format that. So a lot of work goes into making these easy to use for our users. A lot of work. And when someone goes in to start using this, they might not see it, but when you see me modeling this live here, um, it becomes really clear what has to go into making this thing work right. Okay, I think that's right. Let's also make this dynamic okay so I'll say it's six payments a year one two three four five six Let's try two okay good so this is working um, and then Let's reference the actual number here. Okay. Well, normally I don't test the debt schedule this early. We won't need this, but I am here. So let's just update that to this. And so, okay, this has got to go. Now, this should be going out 10 years. Okay, it is good. 120 months. Now, Reserve oil blue. Okay, let's end this on here. Okay, what what's going on? Oh whoops, first payment date. Okay, and then month one twenty, perfect. You guys have repayment. Okay, so that's fine. Startup costs. This is no longer relevant. Capex, da, 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 all terminal value, and then we'll get all into the financial statements. So we have the 10 year monthly income statement showing actual profit of the operations, also depreciations on here and taxes. balance sheet 
We will not need inventory, but we can just clear that out. It will not be a big deal. And annual cash flow. All right. Uh, distributions is formatted right. This is formatted right. Obviously, we have errors here because I, I broke a lot of stuff when I uh, started changing the control tab, but that's fine. We'll fix it. Uh, all right. So I think I have all the tabs imported that I need to. in the world happened here oh wait ah because these have to be updated with the new time or er, timing assumptions okay yeah that's better uh all right so let's let's go through and format now so the original sheet we just need to make these uh lines lighter Get some text in here. Let's give these some header boxes. Same with running costs. Remember you can highlight and hold control shift to change all the formatting at once. Oops, forgot these. Make this a little bit wider. Franchise fee potentially. If you're buying into an ATM business that's a franchise. Okay, cap table. So this, uh, let's remove grid lines. Freeze. Oh, where's my freeze? View, freeze. Now here. Make all these with 15. And then that's good. Uh, CapEx, this is going to be the where we spend a decent amount of time tomorrow because we got to make sure this all works with the existing data. Like this is all going to have to reference that revenue tab. Top row will be its own thing. Okay, terminal value. Startup costs. No need for that comment. This is already good. Okay, these financial statements. So we want to do 15 with. On all of them. Just let it look nice. Freeze up to the corner. Okay, last one, cash flow statement. All 
already. Uh, that's fine. These are already in here. Uh, okay, so moment of truth. What I want to do now is our find and replace. So this is, I'm doing this in place of rebuilding all of the financial statement logic and re-referencing everything manually, which is, trust me, you save a lot of time, you reduce a lot of errors. This is really, really important. So I know like what I just did looked kind of tedious, but that's so much easier than having to rebuild all the formulas. All right, so we want to put in that. We want to replace everything that says in brackets general manufacturing, financial model v3.xls, x, close bracket, and we want to replace that with nothing. Now, hopefully when I hit replace all here, everything replaces and there's no error. Otherwise, well, I had to fix something. Whoops, I gotta do the whole workbook, not just the sheet. Oh, drats. So that was an error. Okay, so something's off. Let's figure out where it stopped working at. Uh, let's see if the cap table, this updated. Let's see what we missed here, okay. Oh, so I have an equipment tab. Okay, that's fine. Let me undo this. All I have to do, obviously that's not going to be the real reference in this workbook, but I have to just have a tab that's named equipment. Oh, but hold on. Shoot. So this is a one word tab name and this is the issue. This is the issue. So I'm going to have to do two separate replacements, and I don't even know if this will work. Uh, so see on here, this says equipment, but it's got the two, because it's referencing a different workbook, it's got these two hyphen or apostrophes up here. I need to remove those as well. So let's see if this is even, let's see if this works. So I want to go, I want to replace it everything that says this with just equipment and just with a cell okay that seemed to work yep okay so we'll replace all okay and that's fine number errors here that's fine because this is all going to be updated and i believe that is the only issue we have so now we can do the rest of it uh so let's replace now we just want to go back and replace the bracket part with nothing Oh, shoot, we got more issues. Oh, all right, uh, let's see here. So this worked, we know this worked. Oh wait. Terminal value. Building, ah, oh, we got another one. Okay, hold on, undo, undo. All right, so we did the the equipment tab. Now we got to do the building. And let's see if there's anything else here. It does not look like it, I hope. Okay, so this, and let me just put this in yellow. So we also have to replace anything that says reference to building. Yeah, this is a tough one here. We want to replace the entire string. with just building. Okay. Let's try again here. <clears throat> Third time's charm. So I just want bracket general manufacturing to blank. Well, is it, it looks like it's working nice. 83,000 replacements, okay. 
So now you can see all these different references on the income statement are all now referencing this workbook. And trust me, when I first, the first few integrations I did, I manually went through and removed like all of those references with the brackets. It is horrible. So the find and replace, it does take a little bit of time to set up, but it is really worth it. Uh, it saves a lot of time. All right, so this is all good. Um, we're all formatted, we're imported. There's definitely issues here um, with this stuff. For now, I'm still gonna keep this here. Monthly detail. Uh, so here we can make a change. So if, if this is referencing if it's past the end month and shows zero. However, we have a new end month position. Uh, we can delete these tabs as well. And that's fine because this is going to be a manual input. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so uh, what was I saying on the global control? We'll save this. Oh, the end month. So here it's now in C6, and here it's C or D4. So on this tab specifically, I need re to replace anything that says global control D4. And that needs to be C6. Okay. Nice. C6, C6, uh, right. Let's make sure that worked. Let's see if we change this to November. Okay, that's good. Looks good. Uh, what about this here? So that's got to be replaced. Ah, because. This didn't have uh, locks in it. That's fine. Okay. And same with this. So there's our scaling of the ATM machines over time. We stop in November 2030, so now everything should stop. This is getting rid of. We have a new spot that's going to have all of that. Same with startup costs. Nice. Oh, no. No, this is not. So this needs to be C6 as well. It's probably working there because we are ending the amortization schedule. But if we were to not end the amortization schedule um, or include terminal value, then this would have an error and it would keep going. So we got to update that as well. Uh, okay. Same with this. C6. That's fine. Now, what is this? Exit proceeds. Okay. So all of this is going to get replaced. So we can just clear all of that out. Uh, same with this. And actually, all we're, we're going to care about is cash flow. Yeah, all of this we don't need. We will have this reformatted. 
Okay, so that's good. Let's look at the annual. We can remove this. Keep ATM purchases. That might be relevant. We don't need any of this. And none of this. Okay. So other than that, this is working fine. Uh, whatever. That'll be... Startup costs. We'll be updating these after we do the other. We had to get everything else done first, so these are ending summaries. All right. Uh, do I want to fix? It's a 10:40. About time to be done. Um, I can clean the capex up a little bit. Let's let's clean this up. So. Let me pull up a regular, let's pull up the auto shop one. So this is the uh, update we did last week. And also, let's remove or close this down, don't save. But actually, so that general manufacturing one, I do want to update. Startup cost here, this does not need to be here. Okay, so auto shop on the capex. This is what the top should look like. So these are in. These are raw inputs. This can also be a drop down. If you plan on buying a office building or something. I mean, this would probably only be relevant for gigantic operations, but it's in here just in case. Okay, so that's fine. Now the value at sales input as well. Okay, and the rest of this is fine. So for these other items, we have tranches of purchases. And we're only using up to row 30. So for all intents and purposes, there's no reason to have anything beyond row 30. So we're just going to hide these. I'm not actually, I need to update the references first so they're not all broken. So cost basis would be total cost here. Useful life. Where am I inputting that? Uh, here, I guess that's fine, no big deal. I'll keep that reference. Month of expenditure, it's gonna be right here. And I think we're good to go on this. Let me hide these now that they're not broken. We do need those bottom totals. Okay. Perfect. So we can pull right from this when we do all the other calculations. That's got our schedule. Remember for CapEx, all we really care about is the date of the purchase the total cost, and then the useful life. And we have end month and all that right there. Yeah, this is all working fine, perfect. Okay, great. Uh, so now we're all set for tomorrow. It'll be an easy upgrade. Uh, hey, got some viewers in here today, that's cool. Um, tomorrow will be an easy upgrade. Uh, I think it's going to be smooth. We'll just uh, update the financial statements.
with the relevant details. We'll do some stuff with the interlaking, making sure everything matches up, and it'll be all. Uh, now, to, so tomorrow we'll finish that, probably do the update video Wednesday, and then I have Thursday, Friday this week. I might, I was thinking about doing a uh, seller financing model, which seller financing is saying, okay, let's say it's a car salesman and they want to sell you a car for 25000 They They buy the car for X, they sell it for Y, when they sell it, you actually pay them via a loan that they're, you're paying them. So then they make interest f revenue as well as, you know, they're, whenever they realize the amortization on the loan, that's technically profit. Um, so there's going to be some complexity there, but I think I want to do just a straight up model that says like, you know, an example of how seller financing could work just with this, uh, a single situation but i was also thinking about doing a model that scales seller fin like a car dealership where they're only doing seller financing how does that look over time so that logic is something i've never done that i know a lot of people do and i but it is a bit complex because we have amortization schedules that are have to be dynamic so i might have to use some of the lending model logic there's also just new logic in there so i don't know I'm going to see about that, but that might be what I, what I look into as far as a new template or at least a one pager template, uh, that I do on top of this upgrade. Uh, so we'll see. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to get off, go do some more work. Don't forget, check out some more Again, I've got templates for all kinds of industries, and uh, you can get everything I've ever built for $999. All the templates I've ever done, it's super value here. If your organization uses Excel or Google Sheets, you will find this completely worth it. There's so much here that you can learn from, just, just how the templates work, the formulas that are used, the methodology that goes into just, there's so much value. So. Um, all right, I guess that's all I got for